And it is time for Making Connections. And this is where we meet people right here in our community who make the colorful fabric of Korean society and hear their stories. Now, today we're joined by a very special guest um, in commemoration of the 2020 Seoul International Writers Festival, which is currently underway. And apparently this is the largest literary festival in Korea. Um, unlike um, or like many global and domestic events, though, it is being presented in an online format this year because of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Um, it started on the 2nd and it's running until the 8th. And joining us in the... Co- studio is Yuni Lee, or Lee Yoon Young. She is with the International Affairs Department of the Literature Translation Institute. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's Let okay. me try that again. Literature Translation Institute of Korea, or LTI Korea. That's much easier. And she is in charge of publication projects of Korean titles being translated into English. And she's also organized the festival, the Seoul International Writers Festival, for the past three years. So we're going to talk about the festival. and also examine K-Lit as a cultural medium bridging Korea and the rest of the world. So a long intro, but uh, hello and welcome to the show, Yuni. Hello, thank you for the long introduction. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry, you kind of cut into our interview um, time, but uh, let's start off with um, the festival because it is going on right now. You said you've been involved for three years. Mm -hmm. Um, So... Tell us exactly what it is and um, what the purpose of, I guess, this festival is as well. Okay. Uh, The festival was launched in 2006 Mm -hmm. first, and it has now grown into an annual one, but it was a a biannual festival at very first. And it's a gathering of international and Korean writers, and they share views on everyday issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, so far, the festival has invited more than... um, 200 domestic and inter- international writers. Mm-hmm. And um, it's, it's a festival, it's not a book fair. Right. So they don't just talk about the, their works, mm-hmm. but they also talk about um, our everyday issues. They mm-hmm. talk about um, isolation or um, how they make money out of writing. Mm-hmm. And also they talk about um, environment, destiny, danger. Mm-hmm. So... Um, The authors are taking part as uh, one of the citizens, okay. and they're not coming as a celebrity. Or trying to market their books as well, I guess, no, or less so. So I guess, because when I first heard about this literary festival, I was mm-hmm. kind of confused. What is the difference between a book fair? Because I think a lot of um, people have probably been to book fairs, uh-huh. um, especially it seems like a lot of our listeners who are avid, uh, maybe readers as well. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I think we've been to a couple of book fairs where we try to pick up books, maybe um, get introduced to some new works as well. But like you mentioned, a literary festival, it's more focused on the writing, on the act of writing, and maybe on the writers themselves and what inspires them. And then maybe it could attract more, I don't know, aspiring writers as well, provide Um, some more insight for them as well. That too, Mm -hmm. but it's um, most importantly, they talk about our life. Mm -hmm. They don't just talk about their works and their philosophy, Mm -hmm. but they are, like I said before, they are, the topics range from... um, social issues to feminism or mm-hmm. politics, but okay. they can cover everything. Mm-hmm. So we can, it's a great opportunity to get connected to the great ideas of the great authors. Mm. Yeah. Well, I can imagine they have a lot to talk about this year, uh-huh. or maybe not so much because of how the pandemic has yes. kind of forced us to really just stay put yes. and um, maybe limit our experience as well. So we did mention before, um, it is... only being offered in an online format, the Mm -hmm. festival. So I guess that would also entail some differences in the programming. What can we expect? Um, There was a lot of difficulties to Mm. adjust in the new setting. Um, The time zone difference was really difficult. um, But what we can expect from the festival is that we can sit back and relax and we can listen to all those dialogues in a... in our rooms, Mm -hmm. and that's the best part of Mm this going online festival. Mm -hmm. But that was really difficult for us, too, because um, in terms of translation and subtitles, we um, usually in our offline settings, we we, uh, offer simultaneous simultaneous Mm -hmm. translation system. Mm -hmm. 
But going online means that we have to have that system on site for the author's uh, free talks. Uh But we have to do a lot of um, after works Mm. because even after shooting the performances, we have to do um, a lot of editing Mm. and Mm re-editing with the subtitles. Yes, that must have been difficult. I am curious, though, what are some of the themes that they talked about? I mean, their lives must have been upended by the pandemic as well. And I guess Mm -hmm. it kind of is reflected in the theme of the festival itself, writing tomorrow. Um, What what were they talking about and why did you choose this theme, writing tomorrow? Um, I'm not directly involved with this festival team this year. So I asked the team leader and then she answered that um, it could refer to the authors because they write about tomorrow through their works. Mm -hmm. And it could also refer to the festival because we discuss um, many issues at the festival. Mm -hmm. So the festival is uh, writing tomorrow with the audience and the authors. Okay. All right, now it's time to name drop. Um, Who are some of the authors that we can look forward to? I know that there's a mix of both Korean Mm -hmm. and foreign authors as well. Um, Maybe our listeners are not aware of the festival and are going to try to catch this. Who can they look forward to? Uh, For that, I have to look at the scenario. Uh Um, This year, we have um, 25 writers, 11 international and 14 Korean writers are taking part. So some of the names are Paolo Giordano. He won the Italy's um, renowned uh, Strega Prize, Mm -hmm. and he'll show up in our closing speech. And um, she, he will also pair up with the most sensational female writer, Jung s e r a n g And other than them, um, Luis Eduardo Garcia from Mexico and Olivier g a z from France and c i g o z i e Obioma from mm-hmm. Nigeria would join us also. Wow. And on the list of Korean side, Hwang s e o k y u n g has already delivered his opening keynote speech. Mm-hmm. And from tonight, a series of great Korean authors, um, poets Hwang In-chan, mm-hmm. Yu Yong-ju, Park Yeon-jun, and Lee Moon-jae, and novelist Chang Ryu-jin, will pair up with international writers and share their views. Very interesting. Sounds amazing. I'm <laughs> trying to act as if I knew all of those names, but of course not many. But that's the, that's the fun of festivals, right? You get yes. introduced to new names as well. Right. Kind of curious, though, um, how do you select the participants? Because there, is so, there are so many great writers, not only here in Korea, but around the world. Is it uh-huh. centered around the theme of the festival or, how do you cho- or the hottest writers or what? We depend on the theme also, but mm-hmm. we, usually we work with a lot of partners. We work with, um, we get recommendations from From culture, overseas? Yes, okay. from cultural institutions mm-hmm. or organizing committees of international, international literary festivals mm-hmm. or foreign embassies. Mm-hmm. And uh, also from um, previous participants, they recommend their close friends. Mm. I imagine that you also have like repeat writers as well who yes. are just favorites with the Korean crowd. Yeah. Uh huh. All right. Well, speaking of Korean crowds, let's now kind of turn our attention to Korean literature because mm-hmm. we have seen in the news quite a bit, um, I think more this year than others, that um, Korean literature has been nominated or shortlisted for various prizes yes. around the world. And your job, of course, is to um, um, publish these publication titles publishing of Korean titles Mm -hmm. in English. So let's talk about um, the wave of Korean literature now. Let's start off with a broad question. How do you think it is being perceived by overseas markets right now? Because it's been about maybe 10 years or so Mm -hmm. that it's it's kind of received um, greater attention, I think. That's what most people say in the industry, right? It's been about 10 years. Of course, works were introduced before, but it's been about 10 years that it's gaining attention and gaining momentum. Now, how would you say the interest level is? Um, I would say the profile of Korean literature is really high these days because we get some emails or requests from international publishers Mm -hmm. wanting to publish Korean titles, but before it really didn't happen. Right. You had to contact them maybe? Yes, first. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing this interest from mostly English-speaking language. I did read that it's mostly the Americas or the the UK or the Um, English-speaking countries that seem to have... Have the greatest interest? I think from all corners of the world, really? but it depends on the market trends of mm-hmm. each country. Mm-hmm. So in some countries, they 
they want genre, and in some countries they want more established writers. Mm. It depends on the market. And I guess it doesn't hurt that, um, you know, Hallyu, mm-hmm. um, K-movies and K-pop is doing so well in many countries as well. Because I am curious what genres, you mentioned that sometimes they ask with genres, um, kind of an outdated article, but I remember seeing one article in Vanity Fair mm-hmm. 2015, and they mentioned that Korea is making a name for itself with, quote, dark, transgressive literature by female <laughs> writers. Um, so, I mean, is Korean literature now known for a particular genre, or does it kind of come and go, and what's, I guess, is the main genre that it's known for now then? I think that's true that um, there is a demand for genre fiction mm-hmm. in some countries. Tweets. But the good thing about this um, high profile of Korean literature is mm-hmm. that the scope of liter- Korean literature is expanding. Right. So it's not only about genres. They also want poetry because the um, um, poetry of Kim Hye-sun's works mm-hmm. won um, a lot of prizes from international um, prizes Mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. So we get contacted by those publishers specializing in poetry also. So the Korean literature is really expanding in its scope. Mm. And that always, of course, kind of paves the way for other authors and other works to be recognized and receive their spotlight as well. That's really great because um, those books published already can be a good reference for the next publishers Mm -hmm. wanting to publish another text. This um, dark transgressive literature by female writers, though, is it still um, a main sort of attraction for overseas publishers? Because like Mm -hmm. Han Gang, I mean, that was in 2016 that it won that award. But even nowadays, um, Kim Jiang, born in 1982, I think those, is it still attracting a lot of attention, that kind of genre? Yeah, I would say female writers are gaining a lot of um, reputation. Why so? Why do you think that? Um, Because more people enjoy reading their stories, because (laughs) they're more genuine, and they're talking about um, our daily life. So something that they can sympathize with, or they can recognize themselves in. Yeah, I think that's why, like, please look after mom. Um, That seemed to be like a watershed moment when (laughs) Korean literature gained a wide sort of overseas following as well. Would you say that was the pivotal point or was there another sort of point maybe earlier or after? Uh, Including that and Man Booker Prize, Mm -hmm. um, I think that took, um, that was a good lesson for international publishers. Mm -hmm. Uh, It, um, because they got to know that a commercial success is possible by Mm. publishing Korean literature. Right. Well, talking of commercial um, success, like I mentioned before, I think this interest in Korean literature Mm -hmm. may also have been influenced by how well K-pop has been doing, K-dramas, K-movies, and whatnot. But in your view, what distinguishes K-lit from those other sort of popular um, cultures and maybe is the strength of also K-lit as well? What is this differentiator and also strength? Um. The storytelling, I should say, um, the story can go on beyond our imagination. Mm -hmm. There's no limitation in terms of geographical expression or it doesn't really cost any money to Mm -hmm. um, come up with a really great, great graphic affection. Mm -hmm. So that's the really strength of um, narratives in literature. Mm -hmm. And I, I see many... Um, TV dramas and films are depending on um, literature because they are always seeking for new storytelling. Mm-hmm. So I think in the future, the, the uh, literature can grow and grow. Yeah. I mean, no matter how everyone now says, you know, it's the age of the visuals or it's age of the, the 10 second or one minute or what not video, mm-hmm. I think people still crave the, the slow process mm-hmm. of reading word after word. And for me, like nothing beats reading an actual physical book and being able to kind of be absorbed and just fall into that and get lost in a different world. And I think we still crave that. Yeah. And like you say, it, the depth is completely different. What, mm-hmm. um, what we would 
just get through a video. I did want to kind of pose that question to you, um, posed by our listener who is trying to get her child to read more <laughs> instead of watching so many videos. Because I imagine you probably read a lot even nowadays as well. But, you know, the, the, the lure of videos, these mm-hmm. short, very easy way of getting yes. information is out there as well. So I don't know if you have any advice, maybe? I have a girl uh-huh. and I bring her to many of those readings. And uh, I, by the authors? Yes. Mm-hmm. So I take her to um, poetry readings and novel readings. Mm-hmm. And she, because she got really connected to, once she's really connected to the authors, and when she actually sees um, the authors performing on stage, right. she got to be more curious mm-hmm. about the authors, and she opened the book. That's a great idea. I've taken mm-hmm. my son to a couple of readings as well. Ah. Um, but... especially with the pandemic, I'm not sure there are so many readings now, but Mm -hmm. I will say even for um, parents who have maybe young children and are trying to get their children to read more books and maybe learn English at the same time, I always advise them to read out loud these English picture books for them because um, it's a way to bond. Mm -hmm. The kids usually love it. They won't make fun of your pronunciation (laughs) so much. You don't have to worry about it. It's an experience that I think um, they take um, for their long, um, for their lives, actually, really. Mm -hmm. Um, Speaking of English, I mean, we know that a lot of Korean literature has been translated into English. But what do you think is, um, I guess, an issue with um, bringing Korean literature to maybe even more wider audiences? Because I have heard that we need... maybe more professional literary translations. What do you think about that issue, translation? Um, Because the Korean language is a very underrepresented language, Mm -hmm. and literary translation is even more difficult because a translator should be fully aware of the source text, but she, she or he should be aware of the... literary style right. and historical, historical backgrounds. Mm-hmm. The social context, all of that, right? The yes. cultural context as well. Yes. So it takes um, at least about more than six months to mm-hmm. complete a novel. Uh, I mean, translating the novel. Mm-hmm. And, um, but there are only a handful of translators who mm-hmm. can do the job with um, really commercial presses. In every language, mm-hmm. I can only count a handful of translators. So if our listener is maybe interested in becoming a literary Mm -hmm. translator, what can they do? Where can they go for maybe education or whatnot? They can come to our translation academy. Oh, is that right? Okay. We're offering training programs Uh for emerging translators. Mm -hmm. And I think even foreign listeners might also be interested as well because even The Vegetarian, it was translated... um, by a non-Korean, was it not? And and I think that ability to maybe reach the intended audience Mm -hmm. uh, may have helped in getting that prestigious award that we mentioned and is also the answer to our question as well. Um, Okay, so do you imagine, one last quick question, the future of Kalit, what is your Uh, prediction? I think it'll grow and grow Uh uh, because um, many people have more time reading their books Mm -hmm. because in this time of uncertainty, Mm -hmm. I think it's a good time for us to pause a little bit Mm -hmm. and then um, read the books on the list. And I think books can be a good guide Mm -hmm. for us to tell us about our next move and how we can get along with um, one another Mm -hmm. and even with other species. All right. Well, that's a great ending to our interview. And I want to thank you once again, Yuni, for coming on the show. It's been a joy. Thank you for inviting me. Thanks. (laughs) 